God. Killer frequency. From, okay, to my knowledge, again, I, I feel like I should be doing more research in the games that I actually get, but these are games that I've gotten, like, when they're on sale and a while ago. I never play them when I get them. So by the time that I actually get to playing them, I kind of forget what these games are. But from what I can remember, I am a radio show host, and I believe... Um, is it murder victims or people who are related to murder victims are calling in and I'm supposed to try and figure out who this secret murderer is from my radio show. Which is a very interesting concept. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a murder series. I say tentatively, but you know, I don't know what this game is about. That's the best that I can- I, that's all I can remember. Look, I- my brain is too small. Sometimes it don't work, some- I- I'm not gonna talk anymore. Oh, is this the loading bar? That's so cool! Very clever, very clever. Move with left stick, move camera, right stick. Oh, but if this is gonna be a third person- it, oh. Oh, I would rather play this with a- with- keyboard and mouse then that makes me sad okay sometimes it's just a matter of preference at this oh sensitivity dear lord okay i i can deal with this why why would i dig through the trash why is this a thing that i would do picking up objects press yes to pick up object you can hold two objects swap objects between hands with the mouse wheel F to drop, R to throw, hold, right click to place, release when in a valid location. Can I toss... Where is my water bottle? Or bottle. Water bottle. Eh. Recycle. I have a lid. No one can beat me up now. Eh. Oh, hi there. I, I guess I'll turn the power on, whatever that is, because I don't know. Am I a radio show host or not? Why am I kind of like in the back? Hello? Who? Stop. Don't. 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 I have a mug. I'm not afraid to throw it. Inspecting objects. Press E to begin inspecting. Hold left click and move to rotate the object while inspecting. KFAM. That's my radio show. I guess. Goodness. One of these days, there's going to be something weird in the trash can. Why am I- why do I bother to check? Just- just- just do your job. Go and do your job. Open the door, close the door, and... That's a cool clock. Uh-oh. Don't do that. I don't like that. Hello? Hello? Hi! Hi. How's it going? <laughs> what an intro. Wow. I broke a sweat for that one too. <laughs> Everything's fine. This is fine. Am I fine? Wow, that was... You, uh... You hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or... I don't know... How? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I... I almost swore I heard something. Oh, 
and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. You think cats. so? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show. And he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. Oh, we're getting but paid to call it that. Sure <laughs> you don't want to. Oh, do I need a tutorial on how to use a DJ desk? Yes, I, I probably do. This looks overwhelming. I've always wondered what it's like to be a radio show host, honestly. Let's do the checks. All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? <laughs> Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubularants. Tubularants. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. I got a record. Stick it on the player. Wait. Oh, right. It's right click, left click to pick up, and right click to put down. Uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick it on the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. Got it. I'm not going to get copyright no, for this music, off. right? All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. I don't think this is how you put discs back. But okay. Picking up call on line one. Uh. Line one is the left. Oh, this one. <laughs> All right, Peggy. I'm Peggy good at this job. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? <sighs> all right, Don. Great. And button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm. Press for Peggy. Peggy mute button. They haven't invented it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line. This one. I labeled it for you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry <laughs> I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. S Sound blaster? S or there we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. Okay, okay. God, the movement sensitivity is so fast. I feel like I'm zooming. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Uh, should not encourage you. <laughs> I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. Guess That Scream? I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Why? Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Sh shutting music off. Okay, you're live in three... Wait, two, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for this job. <laughs> Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. <laughs> this is actually one Very of the reluctant. station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm going to play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. I guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe? Saw off a finger. What is this segment? Of a loved one. That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Ugh. Peggy, 
What do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Which tape? Forrest, you do have the tape right. There are three but tapes here. This tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. What tape? We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... Are you serious? I won't do it. I hate what I've become. Ugh, are you serious? Really, Peggy? You want, you want me to scream? You know this show depends on my golden voice, right? Come on, Forrest. Just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, boy. Oh, God. God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess, guess that, that scream. scream. The perturbed Yeti scream, the falling from a cliff scream, or the dra. <laughs> what are these options? The perturbed Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guess. Oh, it's KFAM, not KFAM. While you get dialing. Oh, music. Uh, play, play the thing. Do the thing. Yeah. Timed responses. Some responses have a time limit, but it might be better to not respond in some situations. Should I introduce a song? Yes. Time to go on the journey that is. Last processor with their hit song, 1980X. Oh God, Forrest. Okay, this is gonna be stressful. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm gonna feel stressed. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. How the hell did I get into this mess? Lighten up, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. <sighs> I love this job, apparently. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. There's a call. Time to turn the music off. Turn it off or turn it down? Oh, caller, call. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Are you calling the guest that screams slow night? Shouldn't you be working? Are you? Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No. Look, I found a body and I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Are you serious? You should call the sheriff. This is not my job. You should call the sheriff. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? what? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Where are the other officers? Is there anyone else at the station? 
Is there anyone else or at the station? Anyone else at the station? And anyone who can help you, or, or who might be responsible? No, I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God, wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three, but Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any? There are no idea cops in the city. This? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I have routed all 911 calls to come in to you. I, I don't I don't think that's a good idea. I th this is a bad idea. This is not no No, I'm sorry, but this is a terrible idea. What on earth made you think to do that? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the uh -huh. only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the <laughs> you, you think? It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Uh-huh. Well, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. Okay. Like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. Try to break the door down, find another way into the cell, find another set of keys. Usually, if you're in a in a in a cell, there's usually more than one key to it. There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course, yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? That window behind me is gonna make me paranoid. Check Sheriff Matthews. Check the officer's desk. Check the desk. Have you looked around the officer's desks? That's the first place I'd check. That was the first place I'd check too. All right, never mind. I couldn't find anything useful. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and, oh. Please don't stare at me. God, this is so hard to listen to for like a Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do! Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? Anxious. I'm quitting KFM if this is a prank. <laughs> I can't handle this all night. There's no way that I can do this all night. I mean, sure, we got the deputy out of the cell. But what if the person that did this decides they aren't done? What do we do then? Then we do our best. We don't have any other choice, really. <sighs> yes, we don't. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just gonna sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. It's the right thing to do. You're leaving. We're on our... It's the right thing to do. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risks right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I... Oh. No. What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? 
What happened? Wait. What? No, no way. This it's the whistling again. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? What's that noise? It sounds like whistling? Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? 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 With that mask and how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. Who the heck the is the whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. No. I have to lock the doors. Let's stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think. Okay. Ah. 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 You, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. Ah. Take a police cruiser. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh... Just... Reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes! Got him! Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. God, yes, thank you. Thank you. Wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? I I was thinking about that while we were talking. Right there. Uh, uh, but no, 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 no. They tried shooting, but shooting didn't work. But then... Uh, Sh Sheriff Matthew's gun? The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I oh, that's right. He used it. Of then course there's going to be no he bullets. He it trying to defend himself. Is there a weapon lockup? Can you see any other weapons? Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. This is stressing me out. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Oh. What should I take? <laughs> ah. If bullets don't work, <laughs> what? Pepper spray. Take the taser. The taser is the strongest one out there, but I feel like that's not gonna work if bullets don't work. I mean, it's gotta be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez, and then. that no no I, I can't hear anything exactly it's gone quiet no more knocking be careful be careful I don't like it me neither but it's an opening and I've got to take it okay deputy Martinez if you can hear me it's time to move just lean on me Yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Okay. Okay. G good luck. Good oh. luck. Good luck. Oh. This is the part where the killer comes out of nowhere, isn't it? Should I, no. You know, no. I say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Uh-huh. Ready for anything. Kapow! Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. Where? I'm putting the call through. Okay. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This that is was Leslie. fast. There? Over. 10-4. <laughs> That's a big 10-4 there, good buddy. I, I'm guessing you made it to the car then? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. 
I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! What's happening? Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Yeah! Take that! Where'd you get a minigun? The killer has attacked. Get out of there. Leslie, what are you waiting for? Get out of there. Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Are you two okay? Leslie, are you two okay? Did you get away? Or... Forrest, that taser? Definitely the right call. Okay. It was a taser. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> what oh, the heck? Leslie, you saved a life. Just another day for you. God, all, oh god, all the decisions yeah. are going to be but put on my you? head. This is so much pressure. I think we're doing it from your side of the boat. No, no, no. No. This is a lot of decision making. Gallows Creek is a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while. Maybe two, three two hours. Two to three to hours? Play. Slightly less if I put my foot down. Oh, you better floor it. Put that pedal to the floor then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in... Oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Take care, please. Please, care, please. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. You seem real chipper for the situation at hand. You heard it here. We've got We're still on live radio. <laughs> of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. How can you say and that Leslie, so chill? We're counting on you. We're going to get back to the show meanwhile. Oh. <laughs> if you have anything on your mind or have any information about this whistling man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16 The Scream. For now, Here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. Now it's time to go with The Flow. And this is their hit, Crying for Help. I'm crying for help. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. No. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's going to take her four hours? This guy's going to kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just... <sighs> what happened to him and he's come back tonight so we're, scr so we're screwed? Okay. What happened to him? Well... Police chased him up to Alice Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. Okay, this is kind of loud. And he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. Uh, so we're screwed, right? <laughs> so we're screwed, because it sounds like we're screwed. We're not screwed. Things just aren't great right now. That's a lot of optimism for a killer on the it, loose. I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35. 35. At best. We only have 35 listeners? We only have 35 listeners? 35, yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? What kind of little uh, tiny town am I living in? Before, you know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big Gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 
5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Five million? Holy, million? what kind of radio yeah, show host are you? just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. I'm not ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Gonna be a pro, fade it out. Turn it off, get pick up the call. Hello, caller, you're live on 189.16, the scream. The scream. Uh, all right. Uh, hi. Huh? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Uh huh. I can do that too. Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? You know my name. Do I? I've come back from the dead to kill again. To kill again. Do you accept requests? <laughs> no, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this, Mr. Whistling Man. You don't have to kill again. Oh, but I do. But I you do. Must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice? To Who's us? us. <laughs> Me. We want cheese dusted. Uh-huh, a big troll. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzel. Yeah, this one's a troll. Why are you trolling me? Stop trolling me. I'll cut your Gosh, nobody's off. safe. Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Yeah, yeah, cut them off. Wait, I want to deal with them. <laughs> I want to deal with them. We also want a mega gold. Okay. <laughs> Come on oh, now. Kids, give it up. I know you're just having fun, but there's been death tonight. This really isn't appropriate. <laughs> man, suck it, old man. Gallows hide for one. Woo! I love this really job. In. We do, in fact, have an actual killer out in the streets tonight. Anyway. This next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. It's David Scopo with Moonlight. Ah. Uh. Like, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. It's a, a thing? thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny. At no, all. it's not funny. There's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie. No, that. That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the road. Already? Right. Let's do this. All right, fade the music out. Stop the track and and hello. hello. Collar, you're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name? And Why am I the 911 operator? Is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. The sheriff is dead. I'm sorry, Sandra, but the sheriff is dead. We're trying to get help in from Henderson now. What? God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the whistling man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually happening. Uh, where are you now? Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my home. Jazz ran? Oh, flat, no. But I dropped my keys somewhere along the way. Ah, oh, sounds like you, uh, is there anywhere else you can go? Is there anywhere else you can go? 
you have any friends nearby. Oh, I'm not going back out there. I... Uh-oh. How do you jump a car? You're gonna have to help me. I don't know how to jump a car. I don't. Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. Huh? You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Um. Listen in to this next track from Late Night Lurkers. If you dare. If you dare. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They're like the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once. Can we call them and ask them how to start a car? Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. I have to go out this door and down the hall? Ah. Oh. Also, do the doors open in and out? Can I just like smack whoever's outside here when I open the door? Where did I need to go? God, I don't. What? Where, where? Coffee? What was I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm not getting in there tonight. I don't like this. Wait, what, 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 what was I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do again? So many locked doors, so few keys. Okay, it's this room, right? I'm supposed to just... Close the door. Can I, can I hold this? Can I throw this at whoever comes my way? I would love to. Where, who, ooh, yes. No, uh, hold on. This has to be important. I've borrowed your car theft magazine. Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read. Pray for me. Is there, is there something? I forget how to look. How do I look? Oh, red. Uh, not red. R. I can put that down. KFM. Is a pen a wrench? What am I gonna do with a wrench? Wait, no, R is to throw the thing. E is to inspect, okay. R is to just toss it. I can't read. What am I? What is my objective? <laughs> Find something that will help Sandra start her car without the keys. Okay. Gigawatt. <laughs> I have a screwdriver. Wait, I don't know what I'm looking for. Is it even here that I'm supposed to be looking for? Scare magazine. Nope. Wait, craft and work. That's a chainsaw. None of this is helpful. Preliminary review of Chal Chalupa Cabra. Did I say that right? We can all agree that the flavor profiles of Chalupa Cabra are the best in town. Despite being a pricey option and offering no deals, the El Diablo Burrito has the best mouthfeel and those huevos rancheros are just excellent. For the hundredth time, it's an audio medium. People won't get its egg. An excellent idiot. Ah yes, scripting. Dear Bradley Carter, please enjoy a free sample of garlic bread. <laughs> Thanks. We've pinned down our latest offers and deals on the outside of the box. If you want to read them out 
on air. Grilling Spree's new offer is terrible and we think you should read our advert instead. P.S. A connoisseur like you needs to try our 3 hour slow roasted pizza. Much love. Hey, I ate the garlic bread. Much like your show. It was mediocre. The deal is worth checking out though. That's rude. More stuff I can't- ooh, tape. Grilling spree ad. I'll, I'll take it, I guess. Gallo's report, GC High wins the big game 28 to 20. What am I in here looking for again? I'm looking for something that'll help help her start her car, but I don't know how to what I'm looking how the what the Ugh. the next day. I ended this abruptly the other day cuz my I could not handle it, my brain. God, why is the sensitivity still feel really high? I had to look this up because I just could not think of what the problem was. And so apparently I found the note, which is then supposed to trigger the event where I find a thing in the bathroom, which I was too scared to enter the bathrooms for some reason, you know? A scream, yes. Um, I don't think it's this bathroom yet, but uh, it might be the other bathroom, honestly. But there's a magazine in the bathroom that I was supposed to pick up. That tells me how to fix, how to jumpstart a car, essentially. Yeah, see, right here. There's a magazine right Seems here. Useful. Ooh. Wait, close the door. Be polite. Close the door. Fix all cars inside. Keyless entry techniques. And as we see here, <laughs> step one, use screwdriver as key. If that fails, remove steering column cover. Check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. If there is a four before. Oh, God, why is this? Oh, what is, what is making noise? Please don't. Hello? If there is a four before a three and no seven in the number, red and blue. If there is a six anywhere and it doesn't start with five, green and brown. Why does this feel like I'm playing keep talking and nobody explodes? I, I'm not about to defuse a bomb here. I'm starting a car. If there is a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six, red and yellow. I am, it, it really does feel like I'm going to defuse a bomb. So I best of luck to me, I guess. I'm back. How can I help? Object tray. Place items in the tray to hold them while on calls. Where's the tray? Wait, the object tray. Where is this object tray? Is it this? How do I... Can I put you down? Yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, be a good DJ, fade the music out, stop the music. All right, back on call. Actually, no, press for Peggy. Anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Caller on line one. <sighs> good luck to me, I guess. I just, I hope I don't ruin this. Oh, God. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this baby? Put the screwdriver- oh god. Uh, use the screwdriver as a key. Hit the- uh, the uh, put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist- yes. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I- I- oh. Screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Uh, if that feels, remove- remove the steering column cover. Unscrew the, Unscrew yes. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Just turn. Just turn. One, two, one, two. Oh, God. How long are these screws? Okay. Cover's off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here all paired up and... Oh, God. My heart is pumping. You don't need to tell me twice. You're doing great. You're doing great. Red, a yellow wire, red. a green wire, and a brown wire. God. 
What's the serial number on the on the uh what's uh, the the Check the serial number. Check the serial what's number. The serial number on the steering column. The number is 5768943200. If there is a 0 at the end and a 3 doesn't come before a 6 red and yellow. Strip together red and Strip yellow. And twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and, and we, we turn. turn. Perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. Pink and purple. Uh, now strip the purple wire. Do not touch this live wire. Wait, brush the pur wait, brush the purple wire against the twisted wires for three seconds. Uh, the if the radio turns on, it won't turn off. Cut the left. Oh God! If the alarm is sounding, cut the triple braided. Not the. This is. Oh God! Wait, strip the purple wire and don't touch it. Brush against the twisted wires. Yeah. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and. Woohoo! <gasps> buddy! Fantastic work, baby! Anytime you want to come down to the jazz studio, you, you get in for free! Is that it? Did I do it? Did I do it? Oh, we did it! We did it! Oh my god. Nice work, Forrest. I bet Sandra is positively jazzed that you answered her call. Uh, ha, ha. Uh, oh god. You did it, Forrest. You sure did. Ha uh, ha. Another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday <sighs> at 5. Take it away, Forrest. It's funky, it's groovy, it's stabbing the twilight by Knife and Easy. Knife and Easy. I still can't believe this is happening. <sighs> right? My Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about. What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? Uh, Peggy, be honest. Peggy, be honest. It's a dump. There's nothing to do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to thank this whistling guy for at least making things interesting. You're not well, saying I that. Here. People are polite and uh... stab happy. Stab happy. Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Uh, some folks have been okay. Yeah, some folks have been okay. You're not terrible after a while. Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. <laughs> anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. I hope and so that too. Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. 1242. We're still past midnight. Caller on line one. Oh, we got another caller? Oh, this job is unforgiving. When you're ready, shut the music off. I did, I did, I did. This is Forrest Nash. Host of 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. What kind of oh, accent is that? Is he Irish or Scottish? And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Uh -huh. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. But you really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals 
will have you eating for pennies. What does this voice That's remind me of? And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Poor choice it was. Yeah, 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 not tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> don't worry about it. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh, thank you, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. <laughs> oh, Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Oh, ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. A word you from our... play an ad, right? Nope. Uh, no. Nope. In-flight check time. Christ. Oh, our God. Our captain would like to remind you that the station is required by law to play advertisements from our sponsors. Uh-huh. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. Uh... I don't remember what this one was, but sure. The cassette player is on the desk in front of you, just above the sound blaster. Great party. There should be a cassette in the dock nearby. Done. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh no! We've had a beer. What am I gonna do? The party is going to be over. The party. Fear not. Grill and Spray will give you a free six-pack of beer if Dallas High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal bill from us and you'll get a free six-pack of beer if Dallas High wins. A free six-pack? Righteous. Righteous. Six beers. Six whole beers. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we <laughs> murder them. Oh, God. It's all in bad you taste. Too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to Grill and Spray. I'll call off 555 749 8335. We've got barbecue. You'll die for it. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Forrest. Y yeah. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Do tell. I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Spare ribs. Uh, but I'm so god. And we're back. We got a caller. You know what to do. You got a caller. Welcome to the scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Leslie left me in charge. Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie? Oh, never mind. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews, Sheriff is, Matthews dead. is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? I'm sitting in my booth. I'm to do an interview for the reporter. I can cite you as an anonymous source. It's not so anonymous if I'm doing this on 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 on, on air. We're live on air. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. <laughs> Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah. yeah you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Uh, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. You covered it. I don't think it's a teen. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. No, no, no. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. That's going to cost you your life, deal. sir. They didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. Well... Wow. on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews, 
Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Uh, can you get out of there? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. Uh -oh. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinet. Yeah, uh -huh. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. A few minutes to move those cabinets. <clears throat> we need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the Why would we call the killer? A phone set up across the office, right? In different rooms with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Peggy, this sounds like a terrible idea. And buy Marie's time and get get an exclusive interview with the get killer. An exclusive <laughs> interview with the killer. That could be interesting. No, uh, I mean we just make a distraction. Right, right, it's of course. Of course. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Well, Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out. You realize how stupid that plan sounds. Look, do you want to be alive or do you want to think we're joking? You're going to need every phone extension. Plus a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. Uh, uh, I've got it. Uh, uh, Thank uh, God uh, I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. Me don't go anywhere. How about oh. Hello? You you don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Man, a second ago you were telling me that you would be fine. How did how did he know our fax? But where is the fax machine? Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. In the office on the other side of the hall. Okay, I paid attention hey, to. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Thank you for reiterating for me. Otherwise, it wouldn't stick in my brain like the stupid the, the, the stupid book in front of me. Out the office, left, left, fax, the left machine. In the thing. Oh, where's the fax machine? Hello? That's a, that's a scanner. Where's the fax? Fax machine? This is the office, right? I, okay, it's moments like these where I feel really stupid. I swear, I can follow instructions. Where is this fax machine? <laughs> this must be it. The scanner is also a fax machine. The scanner is also a fax machine. <laughs> My god, it's been so long since I've seen any of these. How am I supposed to remember? Alright, whatever. I got the floor plan. Gonna politely close the door. Let's see. God, it's so dark. Maybe if I look at it under the light. Hello, I have returned with my facts. Um. Eh. Okay, perfect. Hey, did you get the facts? I got the facts. I have it. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you uh, you still with us? You still there, buddy? You get my facts? I got it right here. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Wow. Okay, folks, we're back on the line. With Insensitive. <laughs> Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. Okay. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. I'm not. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, 
What extension should I call? Am I on a time limit? Hold up. Uh, what did he say he was in? He was in... in... Oh my god. <laughs> He's already wandered the whole halls. He's on the office space next to him. I'm assuming Maurice is in the boardroom where the fax machine is. If I call... If I call extension 3, that'll get him to the stairs. Call the editor's office. Call the editor's, call the editor's office. office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Uh, you... <sighs> go to the kitchen? Go to the kitchen. We're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. I hope I got that this right. Sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. Huh? Good plan, Peggy. Oh, Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move. I'll call when I get there. Okay. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now, what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. Wait, there's a what barricade? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. Oh, that's right. He knocked over some cabinets. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Uh... Ready as I'll ever be. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I've gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, mm -hmm. which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Okay. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly or quietly. Uh, can you fight him? <laughs> can you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably... Buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Oh. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? <laughs> Not now, Peggy. Hey, I don't think now's the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. Oh, I'll lay it on us. What you got? Archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Good oh plan. My God. Forest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. Well... So should I call the secret archive then? There's no phone in there. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? <laughs> Use a radio? Or is there a... T does it matter? How, how am I supposed to know what's- is use a radio? Maybe. Maybe? We could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. Is it still in the office? 
That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. Ah, uh, the work it radio. Be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Stay safe, Maurice. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town. Uh, yeah, don't get excited yet, please. I don't want to think about that. a lot to do before we celebrate. Let's just see how it goes first. What do you mean? He's not out of there yet. Uh-huh. We still gotta find the radio, unblock the stairs. I know. We got a long ways to go. And, oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. The reporter? Nash, hello? Oh, hi. Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Uh, turn the volume down. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. <laughs> radio works if i make it out alive hopkins might just get that day off he wanted eh, he's earned it let's do it for hopkins forrest for hopkins wait ah oh, god damn it if i can't have this stupid thing turned up how am i supposed to draw the killer i can't be in the room when it's on or i'm dead you just oh that's a good point but wait, we're the radio. Tune into our show. Just be quiet until you're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16, I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? What is our... St uh, uh, hit the stinger, Peggy. No, no. <laughs> oh, no, do it. Hit the stinger. Hit the stinger, Peggy. <laughs> 189.16 Jesus Christ It's so good radio on silent but I'm tuned in Now I just need to get to my office Sounds like we need to make another call Forrest Where should we send the killer Uh to the boardroom If you go to the boardroom he can get to the archives Call the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? <sighs> Let me think again. Let me have a think again. I mean, because he didn't pick up the call, you know, so I can't really... It is the only choice. I might as well just call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 I'm sure. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay, calling the boardroom now. It's so anxiety inducing. What the? in a second looks like we're almost through this nightmare any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh i'll give fake advice i'll pretend to tell maurice to hide in the secret archive the killer will hear me go check it out and we've got it oh i like that Make the killer think he has the upper hand, and then BAM! Actually, that's not I such a good idea. Confidence. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I... Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but... Uh, That'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but that's where the... That's not smart. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. There's so many options. Oh, no. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. What do you reckon? 
If he hides under the desk, if the killer moves fast enough to the secret archive, he might not check the desks. If he hides in the cabinet, he has to make noise to get out of the cabinet, which then might be a bigger problem, you know? If he hides inside the secret archive, he's gonna get stuck in there with the killer. He's probably gonna die. If you hide among the cubicles... I mean, if he hides among the cubicles, there's more wiggle room there, you know? But I think that's... Uh, uh. Do I want him to hide in the cabinet? I feel like that's the least conspicuous place. But I also feel like that's the one that might get him noticed, because he has to leave the cabinet, too. Hide in the cabinet. I'll go with my gut here. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. He left? I think it should be safe now, Forrest. It's going to be all right. Okay. We'll look for you there, I promise. And Mr. Russell, be quiet. It's important you make no sound. Quick, Mr. Russell, hide in the back room in your office. Here he is, there he is. Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the Whistling Man. <laughs> Forrest, you beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Frankly, neither can I. <laughs> being honest, I can't believe it either. Thank God it's over. I'll be I don't now. think it's over. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. Let's we'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that. <laughs> yes. We haven't even gotten through Not today. <laughs> there we are, folks. The whistling man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. But for how and long? Play some killer tunes. Oh, the puns. Oh god. The word. Wait, wait, put wait, wait put this one down. Eh. Uh the word. Yes, introduce the song. Wait. Looks like the night should be pretty easy oh. from here on. <laughs> right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're going to interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now. Mm -hmm. And you're still all shrouded in mystery. Uh, maybe I like being a mystery. It occurred to you that maybe I like being a mystery. Too bad. Question one. Okay. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy. That, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. <laughs> too specific? I... Real picky. Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child and my folks are dead. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Forrest. It's okay. Oh, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Yeah. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh, what happened? Oh. What happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was Dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. 
She wanted to forget Dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and... Why does it sound like she's closer? Long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peggy. I'm sorry, Peggy. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. Not anymore? I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Oh, no. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Yeah, you sound like you're getting closer and closer to me. I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's KFAM regulations. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Why Why do I want to... Uh, 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 understood. <laughs> understood. I'm on it now. The buzzer's on the front door. See you in a bit. Buzzer's on the front door. Why am I the one going to check? What if it's the whistling okay. man? Down to the first floor, then check the door. He found second floor stairway. Is it this one? Why is there a mouse trap on the floor? I wasn't paying attention to instructions. Where was I supposed to go again? <laughs> is this the stairs? Hello? Ah, yes. I'm gonna go ahead and close the door, too. Hello? Anybody? Why is nobody working? Why is nobody at the front desk? Bing bong. Why am I so scared? Nothing's happened yet. I'm like too scared to go to the door, even though I know I should be going to the door. Front door. Ooh, there's a, a tape. Tape. A tape. Play on air. That. Mm, that might not be any good. Why am I so scared? <laughs> Close the door like every good person should. Hello, Peggy, I'm back. With a tape. That I would like to put down. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Uh... What if it's a scam? What if it's the killer who recorded a message? Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. Hello? I did not enjoy that. Me neither. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Uh... Be careful. Folks, the, oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Hey, we had a call come in. Another one? Collar, you're on 189.16, The Scream. With Ash, shut up and listen to me. Okay. Mr. Russell, what's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen. He's gone. The whistling man is gone. What? He's gone? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies, and we came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came
came back here. Door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Did you let him escape, or was he Did gone? You let him escape? Of course we didn't. I demand you retract that accusation. Damn it, Maurice. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you it was locked. No way out of there. Done. Maybe. I mean, I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... Why does it look like there's a door on and, and, and at the editor's room right next to the secret archives? Like, don't be ridiculous, don't Peggy. Be ridiculous, Peggy. It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Mooney. There's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. No, no, you said Mooney. Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dodge. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. He seems really <sighs> Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? Oh, no. He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably <clears throat> right. But what do we do now? 104? Is it, this is a time, right? Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store... Oh, wait, this is just another day. ...will remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. You stopped the show for a tape? You stop the show for a tape? Just go get it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. At least I hope this tape doesn't turn out to be something else like the, the other tape I just picked up. Because that would be a disaster. What is this one called? Play me ASAP off air. Or try your call again. Straight to voicemail? My god. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again and we've still not received any information about when you're fitting into your busy programming i'll be frank i don't want you as part of the state you but mr snatcher due to his prior friendship with mr nash prior and current friendship gina forest mate you all right don't worry about gina you know how she is but yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work. Final yet. Breath. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. You know, Roddy Snatcher? We used to be, uh, 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 we were old friends. Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. I love Roddy. I Will Always Find You was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to KFAN, not to me. Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe I gotta go downstairs. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Yeah, what happened to the knife and easy track? Before Gina sues the pants off us. 
All right, I'll go get it. I'll go get it. We are missing a couple records, though. What happened to... Interesting. Okay. I don't think me throwing it on the ground had any repercussions, but... <laughs> what do I know? All right, who goes? Who goes? Wait for me to close the door if you're going to jump scare me. Maybe don't jump scare me. I would appreciate that a lot. Um, How do I get in back here? God, I miss these. These doors are so weird. All right, let's see. They emailed it to K-Fans. I can't get into the staff room, so there's that. There's also this toy map. Why is there a labyrinth? Okay, wait. Final breath. Here we go. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Where did where did I put it? Did it go upstairs? I'm gonna take this map with me anyway. Barb, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. I hope we can still be friends, though. Brad, you owe me five bucks for the festival. Ooh. Ooh. That's... Mm, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. Um... Yeah. Uh... That's fine. Anybody out there? Please say no. Anybody up here? I hope it's only Peggy. All right. All right, Peggy, I'm back with a new single and a map. Um, I'm just gonna drop you there for now. All right, where is this new single? Here, here we go. Hey, did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get this on the air. Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. The Scream Radio Exclusive. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. Nice little side quest there, but are we gonna have to deal with them again soon? And I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, we just talked through the whole song. <laughs> oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh shoot, I just noticed we have a caller waiting. We have a caller? I really hope it's nothing serious. Uh, I hope so too. Time to turn the music off. Oh right, I forgot, sorry. I'm a bad hey, DJ. Uh, this is Forrest Nash. Host of 189.16, The Scream. 189.16. Stand in. This is Murphy. Murphy. Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? <clears throat> Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy That's very birthday, sweet. Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? Prove it. Come face me. Oh, God, no. Warrior. Don't do this. No. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, oh boy. no. Here we go. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> woof woof. Oh, oh no. god. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become. Our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, 
We'll be right back after this commercial. Commercial break. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs. This is a political ad. <laughs> And make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor Linda Carter. Oh yeah! Teddy oh, Gallows the slander! Jr. The slander is coming. Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, <clears throat> and he stands with our neighbors, like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, oh, yikes. Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good Ooh, man. That, that's out not, of that's job. not looking good. <laughs> Teddy Gallows Jr. Sheriff Matthews is out American of commission. <laughs> Does Linda Cartwright help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town? Good old American town. Mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. <sighs> Vote now. My Vote. Oh, God. Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All God, right. what a jackass. Yeah, you said it, Peggy. Great <laughs> a asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not. Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, no. Just no. The one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Oh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Of course. Yep, he played of course. lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks. Sorry, I just wanted to say thank you for the lurk, Iggy. It's good to see you. <laughs> Hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. <laughs> you mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. We got a caller. You know what to do. Ring, ring. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. Oh no. Who's there? Who's there? Who is this? Hello? Hello. Are, are you still with us? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. Are you sure? Are we sure about this one? You saved them, or...? We sure did. You're in safe hands. Okay. 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 All right. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan. Uh, Virginia. Dr. Virginia Sorry. Sullivan. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? They're gonna announce that on public radio? Can you run? Can you call a neighbor or can you hide? Can you run? Can you run out back? No! What if he's outside? Waiting for me? Oh god! Mm, that's, that's, that's fair. Um, can you call a neighbor? Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. Everyone? There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house. Ah, uh, yes, fraternity living. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Uh, don't think about Virginia, it. What's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Oh, God. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't be a child. That's insensitive. <laughs> Try to remember. Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't do that. All right, that's too much pressure. I shouldn't have said that. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Ugh, midnight snacks. Oh, God. Uh, uh, oh, God. Late night lurkers. 
Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. <clears throat> Peggy, what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I, I think. I saw a thing about the Chalupa Cabras in the office. Let's get calling. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to them. That's not going to work. Take out client ah, privilege. That's true. That's also what? true. There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is That's there? a very That's roundabout way of taking care of this, but I, I think it's fine. I hate this town. <laughs> Better get well, to it. Let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions? <sighs> Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. There's a kitchen downstairs? We'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Peggy, Thanks, why Peggy. can't we swap places for once? Why am I the one that always has to go God, do this where stuff? To start? We start. What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or. Uh... Chad or Brad. I just have to look around. I think I saw the Chalupa Cabra thing on this this Chalupacabra. one. Oh yeah. Hmm. Uh, despite being a pricey option, the El Diablo burrito. Do I keep this or do I already have it? Can I just put that down? Wait. Promotion, huh? Maybe if I find the pizza box. Find a pizza box? Where am I gonna find a pizza box? Unless the pizza was delivered to the office downstairs and then I have to go downstairs first. Was this everything food related? I don't remember. I've like already scoured the office once, so I don't really remember what I saw and what I didn't see. Nope. Um. Oh, my nose is really itchy. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Go Gallows High, I guess. Go Gallows High, not important. There's another fax of the map. I don't need that. That's not important. Okay, so it's either the Chalupa Cabras or the pizza, which I have to go look for a pizza box now, which I'm assuming is in the staff office downstairs. Which I am also hoping that there is nobody down here. Pardon my intrusion. Hello? Okay. Just gonna close that door. Kitchen. God, this complex is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Pizza box? There might- there should be a pizza box in here, right? I have to look for a pizza box and something about Chalupa Cabras. That's not intimidating at all. Midnight Axe. Nope. Truck Magazine. Nope. More Horror Magazines. Nope. Why would you litter your office with Horror Magazines, first of all? There's only hot sauce. Or soda. Whatever that is. I'm here, but there's nothing here. Unless I found everything that I needed to, then I'm kind of just wandering here like an idiot. But I don't believe I have. You lit. You, Peggy listed so many rest. Ooh, pizza box. Rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting offer. Why? <laughs> it's always the places that I least expect things to be that I. Oh my god. Okay, well, pizza box. One free beer for every point that Gallows High wins in the Tuesday's big game with every order. 
There was a newspaper clipping in the office about the Gallows High game. So if I go back and check to see that, I can be accurate about my information. Before I order. I think. If that's how the game is going to be played, right? It's probably going to ask me. How many points did Gallo High score tonight? And I'm going to be like, I don't know. So I'm coming back to check. Gallo's High wins 28 to 20. They have 28 points, so that's 28 beers. Good to know. Okay, let's go order some beers for the boys. Beers with the boys. Oh, Peggy, I'm back. I'm gonna put you there. And I'm gonna put the pizza box here, apparently. Wait, one free beer for every point that Gallows High wins by in Tuesday's big game with every order. So if I just order again, Oh, you know what? No, it's fine. Hey, find anything useful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm ready. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Mm, yeah. I don't know where the fraternity is though. Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Yeah, yeah. Shut okay, up. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Ponty's Pizza. Call. Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? A frat man call. Hey, dude. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, dude. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, may I take your order? Uh. Garlic bread. Wait. Garlic I bread. Garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at K-Farm are huge fans of Ponty's Huge Pizza, you know. fans, huge. You should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. Now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Uh. Uh. Blast processor. <laughs> You're gonna love this next track. Oh, I don't know why I'm nervous. Like nothing bad has happened yet. The takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No. Wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean they're all pretty equal. Equally good or equally? If you had to pick. Sure, but if you had to pick one. All right, all right. Not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right. So between grilling spree and chalupa cobbers. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? Oh, I haven't had nachos in a long day, time. You know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Back on the job. Back on the job. When you're ready, shut the music oh, off. Oh, right. I forgot. I'm a terrible Hello, DJ. Dollar. You're live. <laughs> On the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Nash. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 this is Fratman Plunker. Fratman Plunker. <laughs> yes. He's drunk. Plunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? Oh, this is such a goose prank. This is an emergency. Plunker, this is an emergency. Nice try, goose. Okay, he's I drunk. Mean, maybe drunk. maybe this is not the way to go. Listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brother's awaiting for you. 
Bro, we got some beer. You need a second opinion? This is a radio show. What do you think? A Norman! Norman! The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. I'll play the song. Play in the song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Radio Man. You got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen. God, kids, these kids these days. Kids these days. Just say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Uh huh? Forrest, line two. Line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16. The Scream. The scream. Forrest, it's the killer. Oh no. He's at the door. Grace. Oh my god. It's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. <laughs> I could use a drink. Thank you, Forrest. Okay. Welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. Right. Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? Yeah, what was that? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. There are only save lives. like a thousand people at this town. There's no way there's that many people named Clive, right? Okay, Forrest, shut the music. Right, up. I keep forgetting. I am... I'm Hello, good at this, I swear. Live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all. There's a lot of southerners in this town the here. Roaming the streets of our fair town. Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I am. I work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. <sighs> what small business do you own? Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza oh place God, in oh town! <laughs> Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Party, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just. Uh, I can be mad. <sighs> Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Oh, more people. Just okay, take okay, a deep okay. Breath and let's keep going. Oh, all right, all right. No more Ponty. No more Ponty. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening Ooh. to your show. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. Uh-huh. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. 
Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? Oh my god. Do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Uh -huh. so, here's what I was looking for. <sighs> do you really need to ask? Eugene, I... Do you really need to ask? I'm just not sure, you know? Go home. Go home, it's not safe. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. Oh, jeez. Uh... Oh, yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on. I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the no, middle! No, no. It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. No. <laughs> Molly can't whistle. Oh, he's getting yeah, awfully no, close. This is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. Oh, God. Oh, God. I just run through the wall. <laughs> do you know the way out? Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right. Some people have right. good memory. Listen, Eugene, breathe. Hide and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I, I'll do it for Molly. But please. God, I have to navigate a maze for this poor guy. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. Knife and easy. Here comes one of my favorites. How the hell am I supposed to get in through the maze maze? I picked up the you know, map. Barbara, our receptionist, she's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I got the map. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. I was smart enough and I picked up the map. Uh, why'd she change her she mind? Changed her mind. She went with that jerk Brad instead. Oof. Does everyone have dates in the maze maze? Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. Ugh. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. I picked it up. Go and see what you can find. I don't even need That'll to go anywhere. Uh, which one is Barbara? Again? Front desk. Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Oh, oh yikes. Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. I've got just the thing. It's sitting right in front of me. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? But never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Turn the music off because it's stopping the phone call. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. God, that is I loud and Forrest. annoying. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. He's really close. That is loud. Facing a tractor statue. Facing a tractor statue. painted gold on my right. Uh, golden hay bales on your right. Uh, how do you, how, how does one get out of this? Oh, God. Where is the exit, first of all? Is there an exit? The exit's at the top. Goodness, how do I get this poor kid out? I think maybe I ask him to go left first. I need to get him to the top of the map. Go left. Go left. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I went left. Then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me. And a creepy rocking horse on my left. Pig statue on your right and a creepy what statue on your left? Horse statue. Make go 
uh, God, my, oh God. What did he say? <laughs> You're facing the pig statue and there's a realistic horse statue on your left. Go backwards. Go backwards. <laughs> Why didn't I just fight her over? Got a freaking chainsaw, what the heck? I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Pitchfork statue up ahead. Go left. Go left. Go left. You can't find love in a maze, my friend. Uh, there's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. Nothing to my sides. Tiny barn in front of you. Go right. Go go right. Go. Go right. Go right. Should take him to the silo. I just passed a cordon silo. Oh, you passed it. Didn't see anything else. Please. Where do I go? Uh, okay. it's, 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 uh, the turning my head because I can't. Wait, is that it, it? Go right. Right? Right. Go right. Go right. <clears throat> I'm out. Oh, thank goodness. And my bike still Get out of there, kid. Get out oh, while you still can. You, I, I love you, Molly. Oh, okay, okay. All right, kid. Okay. That was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. That's really sad. 149. And thank you for calling in Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. <laughs> Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Oh my Next God. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Moo caller. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is... We don't have it. Classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but... Uh, we don't have it anymore. Did we throw it out? What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Why? Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. <laughs> Duly noted. Duly noted. What do we do? All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. All right. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Unrequested Sorry music. About that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. All the songs to request. Oh, Why did have to I was like, did I need to do something else? What did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. 
It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. Yikes. Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Oh, scrap the song. Scrap the song. Turn everything off. It's over. No more fun. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. It's Murphy. What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Killer got me, man. I. Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robbie? Uh, Master Robbie? Right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn piece of. Uh, he came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but. Oh. Oh god damn! I smell smoke! Oh no. I think he started a fire! Oh hold on Murphy, we'll call for help right now. That's not good. Gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. Yeah. Oh. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. Alright. Now just come on, pick up. Why are the sound effects so loud? Hi! Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. We only have they one fire anymore. engine in this town? I have a few friends who live nearby. Oh my god. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. I'm not going to remember any of this. He's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Do I have a map? Oh god, is this the map? Oh no. <laughs> Alright, let me see here. Gallows Creek Road Closures. East side McCready Street will be closed from the 2nd to the 9th of September for maintenance. Residents will be unable to access the connecting roads between Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield Road. Thank you for your patience, Ophelt. Oh, okay, hold on. Alex lives on the corner, corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Romero Street. Catherine lives at the end of West End of Myers Lane. Old Man Jericho lives at the end of East... Lives at the East End of Myers Lane, and the fire department... Get more fire engines! <laughs> Alright, how do I do this? How am I gonna do this? Okay. Who is closest to the, to the power plant? Or the waste disposal over here? Hold on. Uh, Alex on the corner of Haddonfield, right next to Romero. Haddonfield and Romero. So this one? Um, Catherine lives at the end of West End... At the West End of Myers. Where's Myers? Wait, the west side of Myers Street. No, Myers Lane. Oh, here. On the west side. So it's it's one of these houses. I'm assuming it's this one. Um, old man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. You're the closest one, but you're old. And the fire department. Do do we call Alex? All right, Forrest. Who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Alex. I, I wouldn't want to call Jericho out, even though he's the closest one. He doesn't seem like... I'm making assumptions here because I was told he's old, and I don't want to say old people are incapable of helping, because that is a really bad generalization to make. I still think calling Alex might be the best option. Call Alex. All right, give me a second. Anybody there? They're on the way. 
They'll call from the plant. Okay, thank you goodness. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Oh, call. Yes? Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Alex was too far away. Too slow. The plant burned down. It collapsed. I called the wrong person? The Murphy is... Poor Fernando is going to be crushed. This is the first mistake that I've made tonight. Oh my god. Jeez. That's no way for anyone to die. Terrible way to go. Yeah. Murphy, I promise we will stop this. For you <gasps> and for Fernando. Peggy, it's going to be... Forrest, we have another caller. Okay. Let's not okay. waste time. <laughs> the stakes are high. I wasn't actually expecting anybody to die in All this right, game. Folks, another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. Was I supposed to call Jericho just because he was closer? Was I swayed because... We have a call waiting. I know. I know there's a call waiting, but... Whoa. <laughs> No shot. No way. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. Oh God, it's a politician. Just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows. Yeah, yeah, get on with it. During this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of <sighs> law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Uh-huh. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town. You don't need to bring that up. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing. Taking a swing. Creek. Jackass. <laughs> You're a prick. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, thanks, Teddy. But uh, no, Teddy, stop. Now's Teddy, not the time. This isn't the time for your political ads. Stop. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, mm -hmm. Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, <sighs> which employs over... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop, stop. Teddy. Unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. Oh my god. <laughs> a problem that's ruining our time. The whistling man. You know what it is? The whistling man. Yeah. How about the goddamn serial killer? The problem is that woman. <laughs> our current <laughs> man. <laughs> Linda stop, stop. Oh, here we go. Cut him off. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright <laughs> is un-American, unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Sir, please. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. Uh-huh. The moral decay of... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. <laughs> I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. Play an ad. After these messages. Grilling spree. What is this one? This one doesn't have a title on it. Oh, oh okay. Uh, don't need you. Ooh. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is bad. It's bad. We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies. He's on a roll. Lessons, praying. 
We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss. Hey, you there. Hey, you there. And ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, sheets, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. And fake tattoo face painting puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. Uh, it's a highlight around here, Forrest. Is it really? I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. Yeah. All right, folks, <laughs> welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. Caller on line one. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hello? Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? <sighs> Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there. I sure right. hope so. Where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Bathroom, bedroom, a closet. But. God, I can't, all these decisions are, are weighing very heavily on my shoulders right now. I, 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 go, go, go to the, uh, uh, go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Don't move. Don't move. God, the suspense is killing me. Boys. Listen, funny, you sicko. Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. <sighs> That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. <sighs> You're sick, Jimmy. You're sick. <sighs> Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? It's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? 
It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh-oh. Uh, wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, I'm dead! Run, run, run. As long as he's out there and we're in we're safe, right? You bought ton. You got that much. Forrest, we have to Heather, I already called the cops. We are the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and of course, the van. Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Jimmy's dead. Oh, Jimmy. <sighs> it's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Okay, okay. it's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forrest, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh, we're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Me? Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. I might what? get you guys I... killed. Shut up, you... Oh. Forrest, I'll call you back. And I don't know anything about your friends. <sighs> These damn kids will never learn. Breathe, Peggy. Breathe. Breathe Peggy. Important decisions okay. are about to be made. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. Not, not a good time, Forrest. Not a good time. Nice and easy, hopefully. I don't, I don't know. Oh, God. You'll like this next song. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. <sighs> Tucked in in a dark corner downstairs. That doesn't that, that doesn't bode well. He said her desk is downstairs. Yeah, you don't need to tell me twice. God, I hate it here. I hate it here. I mean, I'm calling it right here. The killer's gonna somehow make his way into our office. I'm mentally preparing for that to happen. What small corner downstairs? I've... This small corner? God, it is a small Jeez, corner. They really tuck Jeannie away. Pictures, alone. Rock on, gallows for life. Jimmy and Jeannie. Four awesome tattoo ideas. Interesting. Good job on the new job. Jeannie, good luck. I'm so proud of you. Made lots of friends and work hard. Make lots of friends. Oh god. What am I what am I supposed to look for here? These are all just a bunch of thrillers. Unless this is what I'm supposed to pick up. 
property of genie. Is this what I need? French. Genie and carry French. Oh, That's God. Funny. What made that sound? Good Lord. Scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Most likely to peak Mount Everest. Hot David Kyle Heather three points. Most likely to win the award for worst poker face, Cynthia. Most likely to end up in prison, Seth. Most likely to escape prison, Jennifer. Most likely to become an Olympic athlete. Please turn over. Is there more on the backside? Wait. Yeah. Six. Most likely to pass their driving test without any errors, Jimmy. Most likely to win an Oscar, Lisa or Tammy. Most likely to beat everyone at go-karting, Scott. Most likely to trip while running in a horror movie, Jimmy. Most likely to end up in a car crash, Scott. This is a lot of information to take in. God, I'm gonna get these kids killed. It's gonna be my fault. It's gonna be my fault. Okay. Nice and easy now. This isn't going to be a problem. Just take it one step at a time. One step at a time. I swear, if you throw any curveballs at me that make me second guess myself, I won't forgive myself. Okay. You can go over there. Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Yeah. I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. <laughs> if you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. Peggy, you seem incredibly calm for Just what we're start. doing every night. Right again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. Uh, <sighs> What's the first step? Okay, first things first. We'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather is most likely to peak Mount Everest, so Heather, go to the roof. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer is most likely to escape prison. So it's got to be Jennifer, right? Jennifer. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. Uh, this plan is ambitious. <laughs> this plan is, uh, well, it's ambitious. Thank you. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four, we need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between, who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Most likely to trip while running. Cynthia, Heather, or Scott? Oh no, Cynthia, Hot David, or Scott? Most li oh, most likely to become an Olympic athlete. Hot David or Heather? Probably Hot David. Hot David. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, you uh, You spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. Eyes on the roof. The runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys uh -huh. and take the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. 
Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. What was the question? Oh god. I was too busy reading, I forgot the question. <laughs> Wait, who, oh, who should who should use acting to leer? Thank you. Okay, good. At least they reiterate. There was a question on here, most likely to win an Oscar, right? Lisa, Tammy, or Scott? Lisa or Tammy? Most likely to win an Oscar. Is Lisa good at anything else? If not, I'm gonna pick Lisa, because I... They both have the same points for likely to win an Oscar, and I anticipate one of them's gonna be used for something else. I see Tammy's name on here a couple times, but I also don't really see Lisa's name on here, other than... I'm gonna pick Lisa. 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 That should take care of the killer. I take that back. It's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods. Driver, Jimmy. Jimmy, well, well, Jimmy's dead. Should it be... Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, uh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Most likely to end up in a car crash. Scott, Cynthia, Tammy, Jennifer. Chad, Cynthia, Scott. Chad. Chad's not on this list, so I gotta pick the Chad, right? Chad knows how to drive. Chad. I hope. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. Wait, go-karting? We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Is it? I hope so. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> Is that it? Are we good? Peggy? Oh, the kids are back already. Okay. Line one again. My god, this is so nerve-wracking. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is ready, advised. Kevin? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. B don't, don't, uh, good luck. Good okay. luck. And Godspeed. Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Swatter, to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. Why is the whistling so incredibly loud? <gasps> oh, Jimmy. Oh, oh his, his face is... The keys. Don't Harry, describe it. Don't describe it. Keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got caught. I, I, the keys. The keys. Focus. 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 Breathe. Focus, you got this. Almost, almost. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait, get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. God. Oh my god. He went through the floor. Spotter! You need to climb down now. We gotta go. He's coming down. And he, yes! Heather! Quick, everyone to the van. Driver, take the keys.
zugeschaltet. Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. Let me go. Just go. Just drive. Oh, my God. You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. Don't forget Jeannie. <laughs> Don't forget Don't Jeannie. Forget Jeannie. Her friendship quiz saved <clears throat> the day. Told you she was the best. I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. God, I need to breathe. That was that was nerve wracking. Talk to you then. Oh, folks, that was a that was a lot. That's too much. And our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song. For the girl walking home in the dark. Crying for help. Are we getting another cutscene? Oh. Hey, we had a call come in. More calls. Time to turn the music off. Right, I forgot. <laughs> Horace Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. Uh, okay, th mm, uh, uh, thanks, friend. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Oh, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. Hmm. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. You said it, Peggy. I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now, whenever I get down, I get down. I get down. <laughs> Finally, free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh, oh. Ooh, doggy. Oh, hello, Max. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Max. Yeah, welcome to the show, oh. Max. Oh. Max is 
my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. Oh, that's he's sweet. The best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's I'm sorry. Now, <laughs> a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. It's very interesting. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. Train. You're a great pair. <laughs> Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. <laughs> oh, got it, man. Peace. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Wait, but you didn't request. You just... You didn't request. You The hang-ups. You hung up on me without a request. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. I really needed that call, you know? After everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but... It is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. <laughs> what are the odds? Dodging the question, <laughs> huh? All right, doing DJ duties. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. Oh, it's Carrie. I'm at home safe. Gary! Hey, I I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. How am I why supposed am to I? know? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did. I don't have an answer. I can't lie to this poor kid. I also can't say this too because that's insensitive to Jimmy. I can't say this either because I don't know what's going on in his mind and I can't say this because he's a freaking killer. Saw you as a victim. Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did to- These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. Does we the whistling the man know who That's Carrie me. is? Hey, uh, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. You this got it. One goes out to Carrie. 1980X. Okay. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. I mean, there has when to be. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. Mm. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Oh. I... Oh, God. Oh, God. I need a breather. I let someone down. I'm still not over it. Oh. All right. Water break over. Stretch break over. Let's get going, Peggy. Keep going. Alrighty. We could run another segment or... Hello? Scratch that for us. We have a caller. We have a caller. 
Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. I forgot, thank you. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it. I don't have it. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. And I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Did we say that on air? I don't think we said that on air. But we don't have it. But we don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. But, Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. I... N nope. No. No. Nope. I'm sorry, Don. I'm just not going out there. Oh, but I think you will. Forrest? Peggy, I'm... I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Do you? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. And you'll find out. <sighs> well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. <laughs> God, why you could, who ah 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 Who pulls Here's that kind of stunt? Is she serious, Peggy? God. She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? Yeah. If she's telling the truth, why don't you go? I don't care. All right. Oh, oh, all right. All right. I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. To the fire door? Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a collar. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Scream, with me, Peggy. <sighs> this doesn't bode well. I'm going out of the office now. I was scared in the office. Now I have to go out of the office and I'm gonna be scared, so. Ooh. It's not looking so good. I think it'll be fine. I think it's gonna be fine. God, but isn't this where Sheriff Matthews died? Where do I find a you disc? Know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. Out here. In the open. <laughs> alone. We threw it out the window, right? So where where the heck is it? Where is it? It's just a record, right? Where is it? I swear, if something jump scares me, I am... There's a man. There is a man. I just want the record. I want the record and leave. Here Take the is. record. Long ride home. Take the record and leave. Take the record and leave. God, there is someone outside the office. I saw it. You saw it. We all saw it. Get in there. Of course, it locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this uh, side. Fantastic. Uh, Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, something. Like something, anything. Are you kidding? <laughs> D basement? 
That's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. Yeah. Let's see if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. Yeah, it looks I like a power issue. Wasn't there a fuse down here too? Hold on, there was like a green looking thing. Is this... That's a fuse. I'll take the fuse. Where is the fuse box? Why is this suddenly my job? Why are all the tiny noises scaring me? These are all questions. Many of which I don't really want answers to, to be honest. Hello? I think the fuse box is right here. It's this thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Hello? Um... Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. I have to... I have to look for these? God, I have to... I have to look for new fuses. Why is this my job? Are there gonna be some in the trash? No? Did I do that? God. Okay. Well... I have another one. i am probably go ahead and toss the old ones out. And there should be one more. I think. At any rate. God, I hate it here. I hate it here. Just just find the fuse. Find the fuse and go. Find find and go. Ah yes, this one, this one. Are they all the same? Is the red one a bad one? Did I need to find a green one? And there were a couple other colored fuses here too. God, just a stupid Ah god. Does it matter which ones I pick up? Yeah, there's a red one here, too. I found three green ones and a red one. I don't think that's how it works. Right? Nah, that's not right. Do the fuses add up properly? I have to do math. <laughs> Okay, I saw a red one. The red is 30, so 30 plus 30 plus 10. I just go pick up another red one, right? The red one was over here by the uh, other trash can looking thing. Here, this one, this one. Yeah, okay. I don't think the fuse box is... is okay, fine, 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 fine. So be it. Bingo! Bingo. Hours on. God, that's noisy. I have to go back inside through the basement. I could probably survive that fall. You probably could. It's not a it looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive. Oh my god. I I don't I don't like it here. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Call for donations to help Chuck Brody. Former Gallows High football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career-ending injury as a victim of the festival disaster late last year. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky and can back, get back on his feet, pun not intended. Drop tickets in the bucket below, thanks. Is there anything else here I should be... Good. There's a key. I'll just take that. Basement stairs. Important. Anything else in here? God, why are there just mannequins everywhere? I hate it here. I hate it here. Get me out. 
I hate it here. I'm just... I'm going. I'm going. God, just... No, stop. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. That's what you're thinking? Please, for the love of God, Forrest. Okay, go back upstairs. I have a random fuse. Go back upstairs. 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 <gasps> Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door lock. Oh, God, 240. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. <clears throat> all right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names... Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target? That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there, too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Oh, God, there's so many variables. There's so many variables. Who's where and when and... Oh... Okay, Chuck Brody. Festival of Disaster, Big Wheel breaks free. 15 injured, who is to blame? Gallows Creek Harvest Festival closed early this year after tragedy struck only hours after opening. The Big Wheel broke free from its support and rolled through town. An investigation is currently underway. What does this have to do with Chuck Brody? Well, Chuck Bro oh yeah, that's the accident. He suffered an accident. Justice for festival victims, two years, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Kim Walker, local doctor K Walker recommends all locals get their flu shot ASAP. Flu season is upon us. 84 is no different to any other year. Make sure you're protected. Uh, flu shot. This is all evidence. I. Oh, God. <laughs> Can my brain handle this in the next half hour is the real question that I have to deal with right now because, oh my god. Well, let's, okay. One, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Marriage announcement. We would like to celebrate the marriage of Kim Walker and Peter Stein on 30th, May 1970. Best wishes to the happy couple. May 30th. Did it, did, what day is it today? Do I know? I mean, but this has to do with Kim Walker, so we're going to leave that there. I can't read. This is so dark. Crime syndicate impounded. A criminal operation shut down. 24 arrests. Inside informant walks free. Police have today... Police have today finally put an end to the long-running car thieving crime syndicate. The arrests were made after a member gave up information to, of their co-conspirators to investigators. The informant who asked to remain anonymous will hereby, hereafter be referred to as R.A. He walked free with no charges. More on page 13. R.A. Rebecca Allen? R.A. Okay. Justice for all the festival victims. Two year investigation into the festival accident has concluded. The investigators blamed two engineers that were contracted 
in from the local power station. Lead engineer Ant Williams and junior engineer Sean Everett were distracted talking about horror movies while assembling the big wheel, which led to various construction mistakes. They have been ordered to do a community service for a total... Sean Everett and Ant Williams. Ant Williams, you... Ant Williams, you are the cause of, of Chuck Brody's act foot thing. Beep beep, look out, tragedy. Five dead, 16 injured after brakes fail on bus. Tragedy struck Gallows Creek yesterday afternoon after a bus failed to stop and crashed into a fuel tanker. The deceased have been identified as Gallows Creek locals, Mr. D, D. Rudd, Mr. M. Hutton, Mr. P. Stein, Ms. K. Stein, and Mrs. J. Mildred. Police have asked for privacy for the families of the victims. The incident is not being treated as suspicious. Peter Stein is married to Kim. And Kim's last name is now Stein, so it, it's it's uh, to Kim Walker. Kim Walker, Peter Stein, they get married and they're in a car accident. Are they dead? They're dead. I think. Gallows Creek, game day. Gallows Creek High versus Quiet Ridge High. Division 2, Saturday 8th, March 1969. Kickoff, 3 p.m. <sighs> Official Match Day magazine. Do I know... Who's on the poster? I'm gonna leave that there for now. Gallows Creek Real Estate, Saturday, March 22nd, 1986. Trailer for sale, cheap. Sale price, $10,000. Lot 101, 63 McCready Street, Gallows Creek. Contact estate agent Tyler Wallace for more info. I'm sick of being a local celebrity. People are so too mean to me. I only stole a few cars. Who cares? Buy a new one. I'm selling my trailer and leaving town ASAP. I just want to get out of here. Please buy it. Uh, Tyler Wallace. Okay, wait. Chuck Brody has to do with the accident. Kim Walker is a is a doctor. Married Peter Stein and they're dead. So that's the end of her story. Aunt Williams is... I don't know. I lack info. We're going to put that back. In 1987, Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention. Tuesday 1st, Sunday 6th, September. Do you care about health and safety? Good. Then come down to the yearly convention. Featuring special mystery guests, the lead engineer responsible for the Gallows Creek Harvest Festival disaster in 1972. Uh, they say you learn from your mistakes while well, I turn mine into a career. The lead engineer who is responsible for the thing and the thing is... Uh... Aunt Williams. You. Uh, the bottom one's getting filled up, so I'll read this one. 1987, Gallows Reporter. Wednesday, February 11, 1987. Local legend thinks... Takes to Manhattan. Infamous author of Tell All Book Diary of a Car Thief moves out of Gallows Creek for a new life in the big city. She stole our cars and then she stole our time and money, said our reviewer Jim Randy. Who's a car thief? Oh, you, Rebecca Allen, you're the car thief. So you did this. I'm guessing you might have stole the trailer too? Is your car safe? Sheriff Matthews warns citizens to look out for suspicious behavior after multiple car thefts. The crime wave of 70 will be stopped. I can assure you, we must work together to bring down this criminal. This has to do with Rebecca Allen and then this last one. 24-hour gas station bought by a local ex-lottery winner. Christine's gas and repair have been sold to a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. The new owner claims it will keep me busy on an evening. He has asked to remain anonymous. Diary of a Car Thief. Police informant tell all book on sale now. $2 off with this coupon. Okay, so who's where? Brody's at the hospital. Kay Stein's just dead. She's not here. Rebecca Allen should be on the run for car theft. And Aunt Williams... Is that a convention? 
You might be at the power station. You might be at the gas station or the trailer park. Only one of these locations is for certain. Chuck Brody is handicapped at the hospital because his leg got broken by a Ferris wheel. God, what if I get this wrong? I guess somebody's life is on the line here. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. I feel like it's going to be Chuck Brody. Out, out of all four of these potential victims, only one of them is... What, okay, well, Rebecca... No, no, no. Kim Walker or Kim Stein now is dead. She died in a, in a, in a, in a bus accident. Rebecca Allen is a car thief. So she's always on the run. Which could either mean she's at a gas station or a trailer park to steal something. But because she's a thief, I feel like that's not so certain. You can't, like... Unless you know the person and are, are like, following them exclusively, you can't actually guess where they're gonna go next. And then Aunt Williams is the one who's responsible for the fall of the Ferris wheel, who is giving a convention talk? And so the only place Aunt Williams could be is a power station, but I also don't feel like that's for certain because it's not certain. I'm, I'm convinced it's Chuck Brody who's the next victim, but I can't say for sure. How's it going? I could use some help, honestly. Uh, it's not going well. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? <sighs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, yes, please. Sure. I think you should be methodical with this. Try grouping the notes by who they're about. I already did that. You could also have a look at the dates and make a timeline. Maybe that will help rule out potential targets first. Got it. Thanks, Peggy. Okay, no dates. Problem. I didn't think about that. That that would have been good. I think we can rule out K Stein because she is just she's gone. Ninety seven, May of ninety of seventy seven. The Ferris wheel disaster is in seventy two. Game day sixty nine. Okay, so the Ferris wheel thing happened in seventy two. K Stein's dead in seventy seven. What are some of these crimes at? Crime Syndicate impounded in 77. Okay, so they found her. Rebecca Allen's at the police station. So not the power station. Uh, staff surge in 69. 87. Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention. Do you care about your health and safety? Come down for the yearly convention. Where is the convention held, though? What year are we? What year is it? Kim Walker's dead. If Chuck Brody hasn't recovered, he's been in the hospital for years. I just, I don't know. Why, why is this, why is this decision so hard? Okay, tell you what, guys. I, I've been, I've been streaming for almost three hours. This is already longer than what I usually do. I'm gonna save here. We're gonna come back to this on Friday. I'm assuming we can finish it out after after Friday because we're. I feel like we're getting really close to the end. I, I want to be sure before I make any rash decisions, you know? So I... I'm gonna let it sit. I have the board set up. I've saved. Hopefully, if I get enough rest on, <laughs> on Friday, I'll, I'll be able to... to, to Make a sound decision for Friday. The next day. I'm convinced it's it's Chuck. And I, 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 there's a part of me that believes I'm going to be wrong. But I'm just going to, I'm going to lock it, it in. We're going to lock it in. I, yeah, I'll ask for help one more time. <sighs> I'm convinced it's Chuck Brady. The one who is sitting in the hospital. I'm locking it in. How's I'm it done. Going? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'm ready. Oh, the stress. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Oh, when you say it like that, you're giving me so much pressure. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? 
I think it's Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? In the hospital? The hospital. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. God, if I'm getting this wrong, I'm gonna be so upset. I waited an entire day just to answer this question. Forrest, I'm through to the hospital, but... They say there isn't anyone by that name there. <sighs> what? Then who? Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? Oh. My. God. The call board. It... I... One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. What happened? Just let me... What did I do? I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. <sighs> I got it wrong? What's happening in there? Peggy. I'm back. He blew up the gas station. The course. gas station? Okay. I spoke to the fire department <sighs> and the hospital. The fire department is useless now, as you know. And, uh... The hospital's only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, you... You've got to say something on the radio. Who was at the gas you station? Have to tell the town. I'm putting us back on air. Now. Gallows Creek. Uh, oh. This, but uh, the gas station's been bombed. Please, everyone, stay safe, stay inside, and... Oh, just bring us into some music for us. Now's not the time for music. Here's some music while we regroup here on... KFAM 189.16 The Scream. <laughs> the Scream. God, how could I get that wrong? Who <coughs> who is at the gas station? It doesn't even tell me who the victim is. I mean they're gonna tell me later, but oh my god. Why why was it the gas There's station? There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings by the I have they to go happen. back down there? First, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I, I didn't know. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. I, yeah, me too, but I w as much as I would want to question it, I don't want to go back down there. Why is this my responsibility? Also, this door... Did we ever open this door? No, that one's also locked. God, why? Why is this my responsibility? I hate my job. I hate it here. There's also an upstairs we haven't gone to yet. Man, this isn't what I signed up for. I just... I got kicked out of my own radio show. I'm here in this small town. I still have a fuse. I'm still holding on to a random fuse. Just gonna close that. I hate it here. I hate it here. Those cans are gonna knock over, right? No? Good. Good. Keep it that way. This is the creepy mannequin room. God, I hate it here. I hate this job. Why am I here? Why is this my job? Okay, well, creepy mannequins pointing at something. You point up. Hmm. The key. Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. I'm sorry, what key? I'm sorry, am I blind? Oh, it's just, it's right here. Basement storage. God, why am I here? Why am I here? Get me out, get me out, get me out. I swear. Nobody come get me. I am just do, I'm a radio show host. Leave me alone. Basement storage. 
Which one's the storage? Is this the right door? Oh god, there's a whole other section. Close the door. Nobody, nobody can... Hey, god. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. More to do. Yeah, I guess I can't go in there yet. Oh, gosh, Peggy. Oh, God. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Tape? Is there a tape player down here? Is this it? Ah. Back with watermelon, the lighting is so spooky. Yeah, this game is pretty... It's pretty rough. Okay. George Bell. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. Who's George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Uh, good to know. You know, creepy basement, totally my vibe. Absolutely. This is... I... I... <sighs> This is what I live for, you know? It's just creepy, creepy basements. Also, what map? What am I looking for? The photos aren't a map, right? I swear, if I open one of these closets or cabinets and something is in them... Okay, it, it's under... God, I can't see that. There's a thing under the thing between a bunch of boxes and whatnot. I'm guessing it's he oh it's just right there, right? I hate it here. I hate this place. Alright, what next? Um there's a notebook and a tape player on that thing. Wherever that thing is. Don't make s don't don't don't. Don't. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. Nice tape stop effect. Not not the right mood for it though. I'm I'm not Oh god, is that- what is that? Oh, those are just trash bags. God, I'm freaking myself out. Why can't I find this place? What am I looking for? Hello? There's a tape player... And there should be a note- was that the tape player? There's nothing here. Hold on. Wait, I gotta go back. I'm too- too small brain. Is this- Okay, yeah, new new photo and some notes before that. This looks useful. Towns of Gallo Creek, case number 983A56, date of report 3rd September 1968, prepared by Sheriff J. Matthews. At a f at 4 a.m., a call was received from a jogger, a Miss Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to in I was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the, the oh my god. <laughs> I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Okay. I'm guessing we take that as evidence. And then there is another tape player somewhere god what kind of game are you playing at here
Why you gotta play the creepy sounds every corner that I turn? Don't. Delivery note. Uh... I don't know what any of this means. Feel free to stop and read, because... I'm not about to read that. <clears throat> God, it is awfully quiet. This is not... This is not... Hello? Stop it with the creepy noises, please. God, who? What? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Wait, this isn't- uh, there's one more tape player before- before I get here. Where is it? Did I pass it? There's a tape player next to, like, this CPU-looking thing. That of which I cannot find. Which one of these cabinets is it? Hello? Um... You know what? That's fine. The anniversary of what? I don't think killing more people is gonna make up for that. I don't believe it. I swear, if something happens when I turn around... Can we... Can I get back to the intercom peacefully, safely, quietly? Nobody's here, right? Right? Please say that I'm fine. Please say that everything's fine. These tight corners make me feel a little bit claustrophobic, I'm not gonna lie. Hello? Goodbye. found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Spreading through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier. Sandra Sharp. Sandra. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere 
other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive? Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Me too. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. I think so. How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay, so <laughs> they're confirming with me that I didn't find everything, which is great, you know, but also... Where? <laughs> Also, if it's not Clive, then who is it? And what is this incident that happened at Gallows Creek that I don't know about? I already played you, right? Autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Cool. That's not enough information, though. What is this? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. When entering codes and commands, sequential key depressions must be made within four to five seconds of one another. If four to five seconds elapse with, without a key depression, the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from the beginning. Be sure to observe this precaution when performing any of the procedures in this manual. If you make a mistake while entering a security code, stop. Press the star button, then start over. If you stop in the middle while entering a code and then immediately start the entry over, an erroneous code might be entered. <sighs> Factory access codes. Introduction. Our state-of-the-art security system uses a six-digit code system. Simply enter the code into the keypad and feel total peace of mind. The Starling Security 4000 system comes with a range of features. The default codes for these features are listed below. Please change these codes immediately to prevent unwanted entry. Maintenance call code 311212. Alarm test. This will set off an all alarm. All security measures. Uh huh? Alarm test deactivation code and entry code. Where is this thing? There's so many other random things down here. Okay, I'm just hoping that there is no danger here and that I'm free to explore this basement with peace of mind. That is a really bad assumption to have because that is when the jump scares happen. That's just a box. Oh, it's right. there's one right here. What the? Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. Looks like it was trapped in a car door. Okay. Death by asphyxi asphyxiation. 
And then a post-mortem cut in the arm. Sorry, if I want to sound a little more professional. Post-mortem laceration. Ah. Man, you really are hiding things everywhere, man. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Dr. Sullivan, we need to have a talk. That recording. Dr. Sullivan. So you have a relationship to the doctor who managed the autopsy. And this was the final tape, I think. And then just to be sure, I'm going to check these cabinets. Is that another song? Also, wait, I have... I'm holding on to so many things. I want to pick up the new song, but I also don't have space. Okay, well... What was this? Okay, this was just talking about Sandra Sh Sandra Sharp. We're gonna call Sandra Sharp. Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. New vinyl for the collection. Fantastic. Was there anything else? I'm gonna go ring Peggy one more time, and hopefully they'll they'll clue me in as to if I found everything I needed or not. Cause I'm gonna be very upset if I mess up the end of the story, if there is a way to mess up the end of the story. Because clearly, I've already gotten two people killed, and I'm very upset that I did that. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? In another tape, coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in the conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. Okay. You think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. There's still more? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. Maybe there is more stuff down here. This is so convoluted. What, what is going on? But I, I, my hands are also full. I don't know what this machine goes to, but I feel like it's important because the text is different. Also, I don't, I'm going to put this down. I don't need that. Also, there's more tapes. How many more tapes do I need to find? All right, back in we go, I guess. This is where me, the editor, should fast forward until I find something important, because... Where? Oh, uh, why? What? There's one hidden in this little tiny corner. How in the world am I supposed to know? How was I supposed to know? I also already found this one. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs 
signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. There was some noise at the end of this tape. What was that noise? Also, I swear, if after that there's more tapes... Okay, that one leads me to this one, which I already found. This one leads me to the one in the box over here. And the one in the box over here leads me to the tape. To, to the table. I swear, if there is more tapes other than those indicated, I'm going to be upset if I have to come back in these tight spaces again. <sighs> yes, yes, Peggy, I'm back for like the third time. What have you found, Forrest? There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Maybe that was also fabricated? Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I oh, think thank so. goodness, okay. <laughs> Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Three. Why does the time increase? Are we all on the same God, day? You're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean... Really? How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Beats me. I feel like I would go off air and start fixing things off the air. Beats me. But we gotta do it and we're going to. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. Alright, I'll get her on the line. When you're ready, shut the music off. <sighs> Shutting music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. God, I hate the dial tone. Oh, the dial tone gives me so much anxiety. Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? Oh, it's the frap guy. No, it's Forrest. Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? What's up? So <laughs> mystery saving lives, the huge. Right, 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 right on. on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh... That's big of you, Plunker. No. <laughs> God, what did it oh, I speak to Virginia. Sure thing. I'll never understand this like oh, fraternity boy persona this? character. Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Don't be sorry. We need to talk. I would say both of those, don't but be don't sorry. be sorry. I've been through a lot. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Any guess? Well, can you think of any reason why? You'd have been targeted? No, I don't think so. All right. When you were attacked earlier, you mentioned a name. Clive. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified for She's us. dodging the Clive's question. The janitor at our station. And we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We thought so too. I thought so. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And 
We found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you stay quiet? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but... Well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said. That's also and sketchy. That if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Speak for yourself, Peggy. Just tell... Uh, you, you, there's no... We need transparency right now. If we're gonna get rid of the whistling man and get to the bottom of, like, this entire issue, we kind of need transparency. And this is, like... It's not my job. I'm a radio show host. But at the same time, we gotta solve this problem. I don't. You helped cover up the death of a child. Forrest! But... But he threatened me. And m my sis... You abused your power to help yourself. Oh, God. Forrest, that wasn't necessary. That's not what I meant by transparency. Said. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Mm. Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Yeah. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Everyone anyway, in this town is super sketchy. When you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Wouldn't she be home? We rescued her. She should be home. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? <laughs> what a Hello name. <laughs> again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash <clears throat> of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. My forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Mm, don't eat your words later. <laughs> Um, that sounds... Why were you targeted? Do I just get straight to the point? Yeah. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. <laughs> you you found the body? That's really direct. I, I don't... Is this going to affect my decision? Is she just going to hang up on me if I'm too aggressive? Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about... 
Yes, of course. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. <sighs> Who was he? Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Hey, caller. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Boris Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Come on. Really? You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. All right, all right. What's his Bye. name? What's his name? Gonna be the pizza Thank place. You, Boris. He's my Uncle Ronnie. Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter. But he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper uh, Ronnie. Lesson, is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> yes! Tell him he can uh... have some party packages here and put his pizza. Start a good job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn it, Peggy. This is your fault. My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Uh. Don't worry. We've already got another caller. Okay, on another one, another Just one. Just pick it up, okay? Ah, oh, gosh. Uh, darn it, Ponty. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. Caller. <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza. Ah, oh, oh, darn it! Now to to peep. Okay. Uh. <laughs> me too, Forest? me too. Forrest? Are you okay? No. <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus. Okay, Forrest? that's a bit much, man. Sorry. Sorry, that was. That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? You also said that, that on air. Anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. If that actually happens, Forrest, you that's on your conscience, man. I I would not wish that for anybody. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's P that's all Calm down, Forrest. Be professional. Moving along. I'd like to welcome another caller. To 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Ah, uh, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Oh, are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Right. You didn't help. Unless I played the song, which we don't have the song. Right. Okay. T 
tell us everything. Unless we I have the song. Following a lead, trying to work out who would be next after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Oh no. Oh no. Ask a neighbor? Can a neighbor? Let is you that go? what this is for? I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between Town Hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. Uh, yeah. Sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Noisy part of town? Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Listen, I can't get any. The whistling man is coming down the street. I'm gonna die. Security system's name. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Oh, oh. That's a lot of digits. Six digits. Sounds like that would be hard to remember. Yes very hard, especially on a night like this. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Oh, all this right, is gonna be folks. tough. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. Alright, we're gonna play your song now. To break Dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. I have well, just the thing. I'm not sure who, but to help someone. Oh, I have a feeling I know how this is going to play out, and this is going to okay, play out in so many different ways. Walked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling Fort. I've got it. I have it. I have it. I have the papers right here. I'm just in the middle of an existential crisis, because there's a code to a maintenance call, there's a code for an alarm test, there's a code for the deactivation of that alarm, and there's a random entry code, which I'm assuming is a default entry code. Most of the time, these sort of security systems aren't going to keep the default. And I don't know if it's going to be the default. I don't know if I'm just messing with my own head right now. Because I've already gotten two people killed and that, that still bothers me. It bothers me. I don't want that on my conscience. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of key codes. I see. Wait, no, I have it. it it's right. What? Any ideas, Peggy? Dawn says she's stuck outside the Woodside Apartments with the Whistling Man nearby. She's locked out because of some new security system. Yeah, the Starling 4000. Right, and we had the same security system delivered here. Clive was going to install it, so check the basement. I guess that's where Clive would have stuff like that. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. Don't take too long. I've already got the papers right here. Starling 4000 user manual ah these codes should come in handy okay i just so i had to i had to trigger the in-game event for it to Welcome yeah 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 forest. okay find anything the starling 4000 <laughs> it's got a bunch of codes it's good programming yeah. though it's good and programming did you find anything else <clears throat> nothing except the manual all right well i'll get dom back on the line then forest I'll let you take it from here. All right, the stress is going to begin. I can feel it already. Ready, shut the music off. I am not ready, Peggy. Somebody help me. Line one, whenever you're ready. 
All right, best of luck. Go Here we go. There. This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Uh... Do I... Uh... Why do I feel like she's trying to break in somewhere? If I give her the entry code... See, here's where my brain is starting to play tricks with me. See, Peggy and Forrest thought that this interaction was weird, just as I do, right? She's there was there were sounds of a train and a dog, and usually if 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 you're, I mean, I I understand about like na neighbors' dogs barking uh, at unwanted visitors and whatnot, but there's something about this that makes me feel very uncomfortable. And why is Dawn suddenly being targeted? She has information that she wasn't willing to share with us unless we played a specific song. And she hasn't given us that information whatsoever. Oh, I'm gonna be really upset if giving the entry code is the wrong answer here. Because giving her the, the test alarm activation code is only going to attract attention. Giving her the deactivation code is probably not going to do anything until the alarm sounds. Why would I call maintenance? And so the only logical answer here is to just give the entry code. The code is 715914. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> I knew it! Forrest. What did we do? I, I don't know. I don't know, actually. But I guess we'll find out. Forrest, there's another call coming in. Evening, caller. You're live on... Oh, oh. Forrest! Oh. It's Ricky! No, no, no. I don't want to hurt anybody, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie! 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 You didn't do anything wrong! <sighs> Oh, God, poor Ricky. Okay, Gallows Creek, here's some music while we process what uh, freaking... just happened. Uh, God, I can't. I can't. I can't. No, 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 no. So... The whistling man is a woman? I had, I, I, oh. Uh, I can't believe it. I'm too stupid. I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I thought she was just a regular. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Ah. <sighs> 
Look out for each other and stay safe. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. God, there's a realistic answer and then there's like this positive, upbeat answer. I don't know what to believe anymore. I am the cause of three deaths in this town. We're neighbors. <sighs> Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call it. Oh, this is just going to cause mayhem you across town. Have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. I'm going to take a call. This is Forrest Nash and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. What happened? Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person. And they just stabbed him. Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. I had a mask and wore all black. That's the That's whistling man. Know. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know! It's a distraction! And I think I heard them say something like, It's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! We Forrest, don't have any! The ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. <sighs> What's your friend's What's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason! Jason Parker! Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, we'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. Oh, On God, it. am Running I Saint Gabriel's now. Ugh. Switch to line two. This would play out differently if I stopped the explosion at the gas station. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh god, I'm sorry, but the ambulance is... well, you know. I know, but please, we need something, or he's going to die. Forrest, I... listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen, we need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? No, but do we have a choice? We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it, so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. 
but I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more. There's more? I can't. Oh. Oh. I keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on my oh, This is so stressful. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? How, how, how's, how's it Hi, going? Casey, I'm here. How are you doing? I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? Don't touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. We need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? I guess I've got my jacket. <sighs> Which is cleaner? Oh, God. Is, la is it clean laundry or is it dirty laundry? Where are you guys? You guys are at the reservoir. Use your jet. Uh, but if I use your jet. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is it clean or dirty laundry? Use your jacket. I, I don't know. I think it's best we use your jacket. It's probably less likely to bleed through. It's just a jacket. Give me a second. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What, Peggy? I swear, if you got something to do with this entire situation, I'm going to be very upset. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Uh, any suggestions? Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a... Producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. <sighs> I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. 
It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Naturally. Naturally. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. <laughs> Just, oh oh my life. god. Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway. Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. It's good to know. <sighs> oh, God. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. Where is Reggie's office? Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Is that it? Am I free to go? <sighs> I have to figure out where Reggie's office is. I'm guessing it's in the basement still. Where was there a computer? It's probably in the basement. God, I don't like this at all. I don't like any of this. Private. You, you're probably Reggie's office. Yes, hello. Okay, great. Computer. Ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now overdue. Okay, there's one floppy disk. There's one floppy disk. Uh, just put it in there, right? Oh my god. Uh, this be it. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Wait. Free slice on me. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in as final girl's boyfriend. Protagonist is college student Megan's surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and... This takes place on November 7th, a very important date for the town. A great goose gathering. Event where a large number of geese appear and suddenly and save the town from starvation. Need to kill off Megan's support network throughout the movie, like X3, but even scarier. Maybe partner with Ponty's Pizza for the launch. One out of ten orders just receive a pizza cutter and tickets to the movie. Is there anything else? I don't think this is the right disc. Are there more? No. Looks like I need a four digit code. Oh god, where do I ah? Uh... Very important date. Very important date. Could this be it? November 7th, 1107. 1107. Nice. Nice. Oh, God. Personal file, Hedges John, personal... Oh, God. I'm curious. I want to read my own file first. Hold on. This is very selfish of me. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Forrest, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. We have a man... Okay, yeah, you, you know what? You're right, you're right. Line, and we're more interested in you. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that later. Uh, who are you? John Hedges. God. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. 
Oh no 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 no! <sighs> Holy crap! My heart just can't handle it right now. Stop. John Hedges. John refused to engage with the first day training during the course. Okay, you're not important. I can read this on my own time. Okay, not John Hedges. You didn't engage with the training at all. Karen Lawson. Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months, fully taken on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, started mentoring Peggy. I think this would be really, very really good, good for Peggy. Starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategically timed. They've now both mi missed Secret Santa, first aid training, and the Teddy. Okay, so you also missed it, right? That uh, Peggy already confirmed that, so you're not you're not helpful either. Um, Barbara Albright. Barbara's really getting on well with all the staff here. Call it a hunch. Barbara had got another cat. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for the new horror script. You're the receptionist. It doesn't tell me if you know first aid or not. So I'm going to assume that you don't know. So now we're just down to Peggy and whoever this is. Carter. Bradley Carter. Oh god, it's Brad. When I hired Brad at our station's food critics, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending a lot of awful lot of time together. Always wanted to learn more about food. Bar Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth to mouth and Barbara got really upset. So it's not Barbara. It's not Brad. Okay. No pile. Not you. Not you. I think you also said Karen missed it. John Hedges. Refused to engage with the first aid training during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send every- He's a war medic! Has a bunch of- okay. It might be John Hedges. It's probably John Hedges. I don't know why I'm second guessing it. It's probably John Hedges. The last file is Peggy's, right? It's Peggy Weaver. Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can. Don't waste time. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. right. I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. It's John Hedges. I'm going back upstairs. It's John Hedges. John Hedges. Also, there's no way the killer can be at the radio station, right? I didn't like the pounding on the door. All right. John Hedges. John Hedges. John Hedges. I'm back. Hello? Wait. Am I missing something? Oh, okay. Usually that means I'm missing something. Calm and collected. Calm and collected. I just, I can't right now. I really can't. Oh wait, there's an intercom. I'm stupid. Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Yes? Oh. I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Alright, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Okay. <laughs> Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Ah. Uh, he's going into shock? God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the police seem to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. 
We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Apply additional. Don't replace. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I'm using the laundry to keep it warm. So I'll use the cleaning rags on the car. They don't look dirty. I'll fix a bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. Oh. This is too stressful. He's gonna be fine. Be strong. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. Please. I can't give him what he needs. Please sit down. I can't lose him. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier. Who was it? John Hedges. John Hedges. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five, four, two, zero, seven, three, five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks... Uh, who the hell is this calling me at? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Hello, Casey. Are you there? <sighs> How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. How is he now? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. <laughs> With that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Why? Well, after all that excitement, 
I think we could use some music. Upstairs when you're ready. God, why why am I running a radio show as a 911 operator? This should not be a thing. God, I hate how quiet it is. I hate how quiet it is. Get me back in my booth, please. Just play some music. Oh god. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged <sighs> Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. It's getting pretty late. Yeah. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Okay, I'm assuming this means we're getting towards the end game. If you're telling me this is the last break I get before the, if the final shift, I... Oh, oh my god. <laughs> So much has happened in just, just this, I, uh, I, I can't, I, I don't know. All right, well, I'm hydrated. <clears throat> Brain is moving. I can only hope for the best. I, I can only hope because I'm panicking. I don't like it. I don't like this at all. I freaking, oh, uh, all right. Deep breaths, deep breaths. <sighs> I'm so close though. I. We're gonna finish it. It, it. We're gonna finish it. It'll be fine. This is fine. I got this. I can handle this. Okay. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. Wait, what? What's up, Peggy? Peggy? Talk to me, Peggy. What's going on? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks. It's time for another track. Another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. I hope they're bringing police now. Hello? I'm glad I got oh, back through thank you. goodness. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. Wait, Sarah? I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago been listening in but haven't been able to get through until now it's been a long night Ever since you found sheriff matthews it's only gotten worse it's been a long night well it shouldn't be too much longer now i'm glad i got through to you i wanted to let you all know what's going on i made it to henderson turns out somebody had cut the phone lines and they had no idea what was happening after i told them well their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news! That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? This was very yes. well thought out. I don't know how he... How she... How the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot. But we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town. But if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. <laughs> That's where you come in. Oh, what do you need from me? What do you need? You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can. For oh, us to get no, in. no, and no, her, no. Try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. <laughs> this is a lot of responsibility. Oh, God. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. 
Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Yes, please. Oh, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Uh, okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Music, music off, Bring music you off. Back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Who's it going to be? Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Oh, okay. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? <gasps> Jason! Jason, we meet at last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Get some rest. Get some rest. Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I Information. needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Yeah, yep. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. Casey said when you were attacked, your assailant said something like, It's not so funny now. Do you know what they meant? I do. And I've heard that voice every day in my head for almost 20 years. Every day? Does the killer live in Gallows Creek? No. Not exactly. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Forrest, have you ever heard of somebody called George Barrow? The boy who drowned? Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on. Like he'd never exist. What happened? What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone started an almighty panic those screams that was the last time i saw or heard george alive how did george die jason i don't know i was playing dead but when i heard her scream her yeah george's girl do you remember who she was yeah he called her I heard her again tonight, Forrest. 
Her name was. What? No. What happened? Hello. We're still no, no, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't. Uh, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. I gotta go to the basement. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. I'll see you when you're back. God, I hate this job. I hate this job. I, I hate this job. God, I hate this job. Why do the clocks still have power? I really hate this job. Did I mention that I hate this job? It's through here, right? Yeah. I know where it is. I'm going for it. Full, full force. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Why is the station so big? No fear. Right for the button. Nothing to stop me. I know where it is. That must be it. Boom. Oh, we've got power. Oh, shoot. I need to warn Peggy. How do I warn Peggy? With what do I warn Peggy? Is he down here with me? She? It? Well, there is the intercom. I can use the intercom. Use the intercom. Intercom. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy? I need to get back upstairs. I don't like this. All right, deep breaths. I need the oxygen. I need the oxygen to go into my brain to steal my brain. Excuse you. God. Hello? God, the door is open. Oh no. Peggy, where'd you go? Oh shoot. No way. This can't be happening. I didn't think I would end up on this side. A, a call. Where's Peggy? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well, huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here. Don't tell me Peggy's the whistling man. That is. Well, he knows I'll get it. Then who's here? Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest no, Ash, Peggy hinted at it earlier. Take a swing at Teddy. 
Your son? Your son? You mean you... Wait, they... That he... Yes, Boris. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling bits tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I forgot about that, Forrest. Rocking my sweet boy away like an animal. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. George's old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Where's this going? Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... You're gonna talk when I talk to you, and not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I'll do it, I'll do okay, it. Marie, I'll do it. Good, then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... what happened to George 20 years ago and that's why I want you to interview us if you I, I can do that I can do that all right I can do that thank you I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story Forrest do a good job and hell you might be the only one to leave here alive <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll <sighs> start with okay, you. okay, okay. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Be honest, Teddy. Teddy. Be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. <sighs> okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Whistling night, right? I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as whistling night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But whistling night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. About midway through the night, we put the prank into act. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, <laughs> screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. Wait, Ricky was there? Roller Ricky? He was, and he was in on the whole thing. How do you know? How do you know that Ricky was in on it? Teddy and Ricky were as close as anybody. I can't believe for a second that Ricky didn't know the plan. I never told him. Damn it! If Ricky had told us, if he just told us, he 
and George would both be alive still. Hmm. Well, if Ricky weren't dead, we could have heard his side of the story. It was just a stupid prank. <laughs> just a prank? That's not a prank. Still say it was just a prank. Oh, come on. I... God damn it. You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. You're sick. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. Telling me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. Who was it? Who was it, Marie? Who was the Whistling Man? I said, it was Chuck. Chuck Brody it was the whistling man laughing away. But then he stops and he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Said it. What happened next? Nothing. It was just Teddy. George fell off whistling. Point. He fell off? Why did he fall? Why did he fall, Teddy? You just you pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the whistling man too, and I didn't push him. God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. You can't blame somebody like that. No one's going to believe this. After all, you did. Why the cover-up? She's lying. Why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Morris. And then governor. And then, who knows? Dream on, what Teddy. Happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. Answer the question. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. 
is that George was drinking, that he just got himself into trouble, and... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. <sighs> we'll take care of Maurice Russell later. This has to stop. This has to stop, Marie. Never should have started. I shouldn't have pushed my door open. I should have been punished. It's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met before he joined the football team. Where? Where is that? When right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. The football field. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ. Stay back. Forrest, you idiot. We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High. I told you not to do that. Wait. <laughs> He's dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Peggy! Teddy! Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Want to explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. You remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That my sister is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. No. Don't. Don't. Marie, listen to me. You don't have to do this. Someone has to pay for what they did. Marie, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Is there anything in this office I can use? God, oh God. It hurt to be forgotten. I never forgot you. Well, no one's gonna forget now. Peggy, no! Did I have a choice there?
Oh no, what have I know? No. No. Do I have to go out to you? I would be much better if you came in here with me. God, I hate this. I hate this so much. I can't even... The anticipation's killing me. Come on now. Okay, 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 okay. Do this. this is fine. There's still time to make the right decision. Leslie, how's Peggy? She... Oh my god. Peggy, where's Marie? Gone. Bolted right as we got Oh, here. come on. Police are right on her heels. Won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. But at what cost? Holy crap, what? Oh. No. It even tells me who I lost. Was there a way for me to save everybody in this town? Uh-huh. Oh, I lost Ricky. I lost Chuck. I lost I lost Teddy Gallows. I lost I lost Peggy. God, I ah. Oh. I can't. Why? Why? <laughs> If there was a way for me to save every single person in this game, I need I need to know. I have to I need to know if that was a possibility because there were so many high stress situations that I just could not I couldn't make any sound decisions. And there were a lot of red herrings that I fell for, and I feel like a big part of that is on me. I I ah uh, oh. Especially that last sequence, I... There were so many things I had to worry about all at once and I had to make sure that I was saying the right... right things to keep the conversation going to get more information. It's... it's just... Oh. What more could I have possibly done? And see, this just makes me wonder... Oh? No, don't tell me she's going to jump off Whistling Point 2. Please say no. Please don't make that happen. But like... <sighs> there were so many... There were so many moments where I was so convinced about myself and convinced... I was convincing myself of something being the answer. God, they just keep inserting these and it makes me even more lost in thought. I just... My... Should I just wait for this sequence to play out or is this just gonna be for the rest of the... For the rest of the, the credits? I called it... Oh god. There has to have been a good ending to this. I feel like 
with the way that everything's structured, right? You have this entire board of people. There has to have been a good ending where everybody was okay. But I guess at the end of the day, you know, this the, this really goes to show... Like, I've only heard and seen stories about what 911 operators have to do on a regular basis. It is incredibly high stress. And they don't have the luxury of picking multiple choice answers, you know? They have to do it all on the spot. It, it's, it's, it's incredible what they have to do. And I think what was so comical about this game is that they integrated such a high stress situation onto something silly like a radio show. And... Oh. Okay. I don't know what else to say. I'm so incredibly distraught <laughs> right now. I do feel like there was a lot more that I could have done and there was a lot of stuff that that I missed out on. I missed out on so many opportunities because I spent a majority of the time trying to convince myself something was an answer, even though I'm pretty sure there were very obvious points that were leading me somewhere else. I just neglected to pay attention to them. And I think that's the beauty of what this game is 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 decision making at a high stake because my original thoughts were that i i didn't believe that anybody's life would get taken away by my decision making because i apparently made all the right decisions up until i got oh who did i kill first i don't remember I, well regardless it's just the moment i figured out that death was an option it immediately raised the stakes on every single situation, every single decision that I had to make to help everybody in their situations. And so, I'm still so stressed. My my adrenaline is still kicking from from the from the killer showing up at my office in the in the thing. God, what a twist! Peggy's sister was the killer, and she had no idea. That's what gets me the most, and that. What makes it even more sick is that she gets her own son to to get in on 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 this crime. And that's why that's why the masked the whistling man showed up in multiple places very quickly. Oh, they're just I oh 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 I don't know what else to say. This is such a magnificent game. I love Team 17 games. I love everything that they've come out with that I was have had the opportunity to play. Look, I wouldn't be upset if I would be like <laughs> If I could get sponsored to play any of their next releases, because my goodness, I'm filled with emotions, many of which I don't want to feel right now. But again, it's such a, it's such a wonderful, it, it does a good job of portraying what being a 911 operator might be like and the high stakes that any sort of decision that you make on call in the moment um, really makes. There were, there were a couple of... There were a couple of timed answers, and I feel like if they okay, this is like a theoretical here, right? If you had another, if you had implemented like a hard mode where the majority of your decisions were time based, then of course that would kind of that would really heighten the experience of being um, in such a high level stress situation as being a 911 operator. Of the few times that I had to do the timed answers, I felt like I was ready for it. And more often than not, the big major decisions, I had more time to think about it. And then, again, me with my stupid brain, I overthink a lot of things and, and try to convince myself that something that isn't the answer is the answer. And so, you know, long story short, I don't think I'm suited for this kind of work. <laughs> it was such a wonder wonderfully well-crafted story, too, that I felt like I was... I felt like that I was Forrest Nash. You know, I was the one standing behind the booth managing all this stuff. The immersion was was wonderful, and the world building too. The way that they crafted the entire building ha always had me on edge, particularly because the first scene we had was in the in the back alley of our building. And I remember there was a scene in the back alley that I had to uh, restart the generator after getting locked out of the fire door. That just sent all the adrenaline to my head because that was where we first met the killer, you know? And then to see the silhouette of the killer walk in the background, that that kind of sold it for me. That told me that this is a very serious situation and that um, every single decision I make thereafter 
was crucial. But my goodness, look, if... <laughs> I say this with almost every game that I love and enjoy and, and have enjoyed playing, but if you're watching this video and you have the ability to go support the devs, support the company, and purchase the game, I 100, no, I 1000% say go for it because it, this is such a wonderful experience to have. It is worth the money. <laughs> It's not something you get to experience on a regular basis, and I think this is something that should... Like, there is a certain amount of awareness that I feel like needs to be brought to this game because I feel like it emulates what being a 911 operator truly might be like. And again, I can't attest to this idea of what... I, I don't know what a nine, being a 911 operator is like, but if this is simulating that kind of thing it does a really good job of putting me the player under a heavy amount of stress in every single decision that they make throughout the game i truly believe that's what the foundation of this game is it's it's crucial decision making at high stress levels and they did a really good job of it i was on edge for the majority of the game aside from like the comic relief that they provide i if there's anything that i like about horror games is when the game developers implement comedic relief, you know, a moment to release all of the stress that you've accumulated from being, you know, on edge, wary of everything. I feel like that's very stylistic of Team 17 and the games that Team 17 has developed. So I appreciate that. I, I really do. I need to look up all the good endings for the people that I accidentally killed due to my... <laughs> due to my lack of expertise and my poor decision making because i i really want to know if there's a good ending where everybody survives and that we capture marie was that her name i'm really bad with names too so i i have to go back and look through all this footage myself to see what it is that i did wrong but man i love this game this was so cool it was very nerve-wracking, but also very thought-provoking, and that's what I love about these kinds of games, these styles of games, is that it gets your it gets your brain moving, it makes you think. You know what? Gaming is just awesome. We'll leave it at that. 